Okay, everybody, uh, this is section 3.3. Uh, this is uh, just an extension of what we've done the, for uh, sections one and two leading up to this. We're still talking about all these different angle groupings that go with the transversal. Um, so you, hopefully you got those down, you've been studying them. Uh, but this, in this case, we're going to kind of turn things around and we're going to use these angle groupings to prove if in a transversal, the, the lines are in the transversal are parallel to each other, okay? So we've got all these different, you know, angle groupings. We got corresponding angles. So hopefully you remember they're angles that are on the same side of the transversal in the same position or corresponding positions, but we're throwing in the word converse, okay? Now remember if these rules that we've been looking at the last couple of sections are all an if then form a conditional statement. And what's the converse do to a conditional statement? It flips it around. Okay. So back, if I, if I read this for you really quick, just kind of listen, if I read this the way it should have been written in the first place, and then I'll read the converse. Okay. So the, the rule that's up here, I'm just, I'm going to flip it around right now. So if two lines of a transversal are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, so that's what we learned in the last section. But now if you read the, the definition, if two lines are cut by a transversal so that the corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Okay, so we're going to kind of do things, I, I might call it backwards a little bit. Okay, but We've got these different definitions, and I'm just going to do the proofs as we go with the definitions this time, instead of doing all the definitions first, and then going back for the proofs, because I'm, I'm hoping that you got these uh, definitions of the, at least the, the groupings down, okay? So once again, um, this, this time the, the authors are not very nice to us. They didn't draw in the Proof. So we're going to have to do that, which means that we're going to have to do everything. Okay. So, but once again, I want you to understand a proof is just you telling me what you know and what they gave you. Okay. So remember playing by the rules. So you got statements, you got reasons. If you can go ahead and draw in that transversal, and we're going to have to. We're given that angle four is congruent to angle six, and we have to prove that angle L or line L, I'm sorry, line L is parallel to line M. Okay. Now, if you if you look at what angle four and six are, and you know your your rules, four and six are alternate interior angles, and if they're telling me that it's they're congruent right off the bat. So I right off the bat I should be able to say that they're going to be congruent, but I can't do that. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna have to kind of mess around here a little bit, but this is how you have to do a proof sometimes. Okay, so this is given to me. Remember, first step is always what you're given. Okay, from there, I you know my proof is basically done, but I haven't proven anything. That was what was given to me. What else do we know here? Okay, well, first off, if I look at what else is given to me or what the picture shows me. Can't I say that angle four is congruent to angle two and by vertical angles? Okay, so that's something that we know. And I kind of told you last section, remember vertical angles and linear pairs are other things that can be used in a transversal. Okay, now taking what's given to me, taking what we just did in step two, what could I say? Because there's really nothing left up there for me to say or do. But from what I've written down, is there something I could say or do? Okay. So taking a look at these two steps, what can I say? Well, if I'm looking at it, I've got angle four in both statements. And remember this thing that I keep telling you is going to be your friend. Don't I have the transitive property? Okay. Now remember, if I have transitive property, I can now say that angle six is congruent to angle two, and that's by the transitive property. Okay. Okay. And 
and if angles, this is, this is where you're thinking and you know your stuff, if angles two and six are congruent, what kind of angles are they in a transversal? And so I'm going, hey, they're on the same side of the transversal. Angle two sits on top of a line. Angle six, six sits on top of a line. If I know my stuff, then angle six is equal to angle, or I'm sorry, timeout, timeout. I can move this thing. Don't remember what I'm doing here. I could say that angle or line L is parallel to line M. And angle six and angle two are corresponding angles, so corresponding angles. And whenever I'm proving that lines are parallel, it's because of a converse. So I kind of have to make sure I put that word in there. Okay, so let me let me go backwards here. I took what they gave me, and that from what they gave me, I could prove it was that the lines are parallel, but that's what they gave me. I have to go and find something to prove it. So I, I took whatever else I knew. I, I know that these are vertical angles. I just have to think about that. I wrote them down. I have to be able to kind of use steps that I've had before sometimes and use them to my advantage. And I, I've told you many times already, that the transitive property is going to be your friend. So you got to be, that's got to be ready to go uh, when you're doing these. Okay. And because I now, I, I proved, not it was given to me, but I proved that angle six and angle two were equal. And I know what kind of angles they are in a transversal. And if those angles are equal, then the lines had to be parallel. Okay. So playing games, knowing the rules. Don't make it hard. Tell me what you know, and hopefully you know a lot because you study, okay? So just a reiteration here at the top, these two theorems talking about alternate exterior angles and same side interior angles. You're just saying if those angles are in the in same side interior angles are the only ones that are supplementary, they're 180, okay? If they're supplementary, then the lines are parallel. The second one, if the alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel, okay? So let's go ahead and start this proof. You know, it's really important too that you got your notes from in front of you from other sections because I guess you can see now that they kind of build on each other. I'm just gonna really start right away. Angle seven is congruent to angle one, and that's given to us. Okay, and angle one and angle seven are alternate exterior angles. They're telling me they're congruent, so why can't I just say, hey, this thing is, they're parallel? Well, that's what they gave me, I gotta prove it, okay? Now I'm just starting to go through and telling me stuff that you know, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. And, you know, let's think too. I got I to gotta have a transitive property maybe once in a while. So I got to think of things that I can, that I can say that are going to be um, helpful, okay? And let me just give you an example. I could, looking at this picture, I can go two ways with this one. I'll go this way. Angle 5 plus angle 6 is equal to 180 degrees because they're a linear pair, okay? I just, I can see it, I know the rule, I can write it down, okay? But then I gotta remember, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to prove lines are parallel and linear pairs don't prove that lines are parallel, okay? Proves the line straight, but doesn't prove that two lines are parallel. So once again, I know stuff, but does it help me get to where I need to go? I, I'm not sure right now that one's gonna help me, but I wrote it down, okay? I, I could have said I could have said six and seven. I could have done angle six plus angle seven is equal uh, to 180, um, and I could have done that. But once again, that's not going to be uh, a linear pair doesn't prove parallel lines. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to go uh, angle one and angle three are going to be equal because they're vertical angles. 
Okay. And then, you know, I'm going to point out again here, using your proofs, using the different steps you use, sometimes I can go backwards and use what I've said. All right. Now, and I said, you know, always want to be thinking transitive property. So it really kind of helps out. Do I have a transitive property here? Well, yeah, angle one is my B in the transitive property. So that means angle seven would be congruent or equal to angle three. Okay. So that's why the transitive property. And if I look at what kind of angles are angles three and angle seven, well, they're on the same side of the transversal line. Angle three is actually on the interior, but it's also on the bottom of the line. Angle seven's exterior, but it's also on the bottom of the line. So if we know our stuff, those are corresponding angles. So now I can prove that the two lines are parallel by corresponding angles converse okay now hopefully you follow that okay this step right here was really unnecessary but I just you know I said tell me what you know well hopefully you knew that sometimes that might work I can use it to mess around with those things but um, you know for in this case it did I it wasn't necessary and we learn that over time by doing these what what works and what's not going to work Okay, corresponding angles converse was the last step in both of these proofs. I'm just going to warn you that's not always going to happen. Okay, so let's go here. Uh, let's, if you could draw this picture for me, please. If you could draw a proof for me, please. And we'll take what they give me. Given. Okay. Now, we're doing all this transversal stuff. I, I don't see a transversal there. Okay. I uh, just don't. But, you know, I can go ahead and extend lines. Okay. Remember, lines go on infinitely forever. And I could do this. So, do you. Do you see a transversal now? Okay. All right. Now I have to prove that AD, this line, is parallel to BC. Okay. Well, I might be able to keep extended lines then and have another transversal over here. Okay. Very good. So really what I'm trying to do is prove that these two lines here are parallel. So really, I kind of want to look at that transversal right there. So this is, once again, um, just knowing some stuff. That's why I'm trying to help you out a little bit here, okay? But that's what I'm going to have to try to do. So taking what they give me, I think that right off the bat, you, you guys look at taking what they give me to what would my, my next step be if I got this information? Well, I think that angle six is going to be my B, right? So if that's my B, can't I say that angle five is now congruent to angle four? And that's why the transitive property, okay? All right, so knowing your rules. How do I play with them? How do I make them work? There you go. Okay, now take a look at your picture. Look at angles four and five, okay? And remember the lines I'm trying to prove are here. So this really right here is my transversal line. What kind of angles are four and five in a transversal? Well, they're both between the lines, but they're on opposite sides or alternate sides of the line. Okay, so they would be alternate interior angles, and we just proved that they're equal, so 
I can say that AD is parallel to BC by alternate interior angles converse. Okay. So, tell them, taking what they give me, using that to get me something, seeing what I see, knowing what I know, gets me a pretty easy proof there, okay? There's a lot going on, and I hope you understood. You know, I got these figures, but the figures are made up of lines, even though it looks like they stop and they're just segments, but remember, lines keep going on forever. I use that to my advantage, too, to help with the picture, okay? All right. So uh, we got some algebra that kind of goes with these first steps, okay? And I, I, they didn't tell us this, but I'm saying these lines are parallel, okay? I want to find out what X would be to prove the lines are parallel in both cases, okay? So what kind of angles do we have where it's X squared minus 4 and 21? Well, they're on the same side of the transversal line. Uh, angle 21 sits on top of the line or really to the right of the line. And x squared minus 4 really sits to the right or on top of the line. So they should be equal if they're parallel. Okay, so I should be able to do that. And that would help me solve for x. Okay, if I look at this other example, I'm going to assume maybe that these lines are parallel or I have to solve for x to show that they're parallel. So if I look at these two angles, they're both between the lines, but they're on different sides of the transversal. So therefore, they should be alternate interior angles, and they should be equal if they are. So I should be able to do this, okay? So I'll let you guys go ahead and solve those. If you want to hit pause, and then we'll look at the solutions, okay? So solve both of those for X. You're going to get these questions on a test on quizzes. So I want to make sure we got that. Um, go ahead and plug those back into just to prove it. But when I plug them back in, I get uh, in A, I get both sides are 21. And I plug 6 in for B, and I get both sides are 13. Okay. All right. So this is a, a pretty cool proof here. This will You'll get this on a homework assignment. So um, if you got if you got the note page for this, that's great. But otherwise, once you go ahead and draw in the, uh, I'll call that a double transversal if you want. Uh, write down the given and what you have to prove, and let's go ahead and write in the um, two column proof. Uh, if you want to hit pause, write, write all that down, and then come on back, and um, we'll start going over the solution. Okay. All right, a lot here, okay, and, and really use the, the illustration to your advantage. Take what they give you. Okay, C is parallel to D. Okay, so I show that. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So remember I put these little arcs that shows congruency. Okay, and that's all they gave me. So that's kind of cool, all right? Um, and then we start off with our statement. So we wrote down a statement and they're given, okay? And then they give me some other statements. I just got to come up with the reasons, okay? Why is angle one equal to angle two, okay? Now you got to remember that C and D were parallel to each other. So really you're looking at the transversals really right here. So maybe that helps you a little bit, okay? So in that transversal, what kind of angles are one and two? Well, we're on the same side of the transversal line, which is line A, and angle one's on the left of that 
of C and two is on the left of D. So I think that those are corresponding angles. Okay. In step three, they say that angle two is, is congruent to angle three. Well, you know, if we were looking at it, they would be alternate interior angles, but that would mean that A and B would have to be parallel and they're not, or at least we haven't proven that yet. That's what we have to prove. So I can't, I can't say they're equal because I can't prove A and B are parallel yet. Why are they congruent? Well, remember, sometimes we gotta look at what we've done already and, you know, do I have my B? And transitive property is something we always gotta have going on. So angle one is gonna be congruent to angle three. Oops, sorry, turn up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Transitive right there for me, I didn't have to write it down. It's a transitive property, okay? Now, if two and three are congruent, we've proven they are by the transitive property, does that now allow me to say that A and B are now parallel? And it does, okay? And what kind of angles are two and three? Well, I kind of gave that to you a second ago. So they're alternate interior angles, but I got to throw the word converse on it because I'm trying to prove lines are parallel, okay? All right, so make sure, um, you know, homework on these things are 